Hello there and welcome back to another video. In this video, we will be covering the topic of how can the Clone Wars' 40 unfinished episodes slash 10 unfinished story arcs be completed. As established in previous videos, Star Wars The Clone Wars has 40 episodes slash 10 story arcs that have been left unfinished due to the cancellation of the show back in March 2013. I have thought of three different ways these 10 story arcs could be completed in animation. This first way is the most obvious, just complete the arcs as a season 8, 9 and onwards. Considering there are 40 episodes left, there are multiple ways they could split up the episodes into seasons. If they wanted to continue having 12 episodes per season, they could split these into 3 seasons, where season 8 would have 3 arcs, season 9 would have another 3, and the 10th season would have 4 story arcs, with an increase to 16 episodes. If they wanted to increase the number to 16 episodes per season like the Bat Batch had, then they'd have 4 arcs in the 8th season, 4 arcs in the ninth season, and then 2 arcs in the 10th season, decreasing the episode number down to 8 for that 3rd and last season. I personally think the best way in this scenario would be to do an even split, have an 8th season with 20 episodes, and a ninth season with 20 episodes. While doing more seasons may be the most obvious, it also has its downsides. As the Siege of Mandalore has already been told, and is still the story arc that takes place large chronologically, doing story arcs in the same show after it would be kinda counteractive to it being the final story arc. Even though the earlier seasons of the show were told out of order, I still don't think they sacrificed the finality of the Siege of Mandalore, as well as the planned full versions of season 6 to 8, which seem to have been heavily implied to have been intended to air in 100% production order. This includes original confirmations that season 7 was always intended to open with the Bad Batch arc, and Ahsoka's walkabout originally being meant for season 6. Another inclination that they were meant to air in production order is Boba's armour and Slave 1 showing up in the Dark Disciple arc, something he would have regained in the Unfinished Bounty Hunter arc, which places that as a Season 6 arc. Quinlan Voss's inclusion in Son of Daphomir is also dependent on the Dark Disciple arc being told first, as is Echo's inclusion in the Odor of the Bad Batch on Kashyyyk arc, needing the previous Bad Batch arc before it. The only reason Ahsoka's walkabout was included after the Bad Batch arc, but set before it in the 2027 season, was because they wanted to keep the Bad Batch arc as the opening arc to the season, as well as start with a story some of us had already seen in its unfinished form. Not only that, but the entirety of the 2020 version of the 7th season was excessively marketed as the final season, with the logo only recently being changed to not include the final season subtitle, when representing the show as a whole on Disney+, Plus, with it taking over 4 years since the season ended for them to change it to no longer include that subtitle. StarWars.com shortly later followed suit, with the final season subtitle being removed from the Clone Wars' main page, though it is still present on the page that lists all the Star Wars TV shows, though I assume this will be changed at a later date. I will note, however, that both Season 5 and The Lost Missions were at some point referred to as the final season, with Lucasfilm backtracking on this statement each time a new set of episodes were confirmed to be coming. If this option was to be chosen, then hopefully they could reorder the episodes on Disney Plus to be in chronological order, maybe even revamping the menu system so the Clone Wars movie can be included within the same section as the TV show. I feel like it's possible that they might want to cut the Sith Shrine and the Use on Vong story arcs, and thus make the episode count 16 per season. This is due to how these two story arcs need a bit more tweaking than the other eight to fit into the canon, though in my opinion Luke's film are perfectly capable of doing the necessary changes as they changed a lot more when they decided to finish Ahsoka's walkabout. Replacing two characters with two other entirely new ones, move the entire story arc forward in the timeline, and change the story's ending to connect to the Siege of Mandalore. The second way stems from the fact that every single arc left is the same length at 88 minutes each, all originally being planned as four 22 minute episodes which is around the same time as the Clone Wars movie. The Clone Wars movie itself was actually originally planned as four separate episodes to air as part of the first season before being combined into a feature length movie later in development. Other Clone Wars arcs in the past have also been combined into feature lengths, including the return of Darth Maul, which got an exclusive straight DVD cut of all four of its episodes, the Youngling arc, which was shown in Fort Celebration 2012, and a movie length screening of the Siege of Mandalore at Celebration 2022. 
these unfinished story arcs being combined into feature length Disney Plus specials would become a full circle moment for Lucasfilm and Asian, considering they started out with the Clone Wars movie. These animated specials could also have their promotion directed at the characters they would focus on, such as a Crystal Crisis on Utapau animated special being promoted as an Obi-Wan and Anakin Buddy Cop-like movie, while the Dark Disciple and Saving Voss specials could be promoted as the continuation and conclusion of Ventress's Clone Wars story and how she became the person we see in the Bad Batch. This method would most likely complete the story arcs in an order that's less chronological and instead focus on the more major story arcs like Son of Daphomir and Dark Disciple first. While this is a more likely way that these unfinished arts could see the light of day, I do also see some downsides to this method. Being feature length edits could mean that scenes that would have stayed in their original 22 minute episode cuts could be omitted for better pacing between parts of the story. This could also mean that stuff like the intro narrations for each arc's episodes 2 to 4 would be omitted for one long immersive viewing experience. This method could also be used to exclude the completion of some story arcs, like the Yuuzhan Vong X-Files abduction arc, as they might not be seen as marketable as other stories. Another drawback to this release method is that it would take the story arcs longer to get released compared to being released together in a show, with it being likely that only 2-3 to three specials would be released per year. Something that draws me against them making the remaining unfinished arcs into animated 90 minute specials is how despite Siege of Mandalore seemingly being edited to act as one without having opening narrations or fortune cookies after its first episode, it was still technically released as four standalone episodes. Also, if they wanted to release them this way, then they could have done a story arc in place of Tales of the Jedi and Tales of the Empire, as they both amount to the same length as screen time. The third way would be to basically use all 40 episodes as the basis of another animated show that could or could not have a title that is linked to the Clone Wars. Maybe something like Tales of the Clone Wars or the Clone Wars Lost Legacies. This show would essentially be like the Lost Missions, but an entire separate show of it, and would most likely split the 40 episodes across two seasons, which would have five story arcs each and consist of two sets of 20 episodes. This would work well with what seems like the standard Disney Plus animation order consisting of 40 episodes, with other shows under their IP umbrella like Phineas and Ferb and Futurama getting their own 40 episode orders that are then split up to be released released over a longer period. Though while Futurama seems to be splitting its 40 episodes over 4 years, airing 10 episodes per year, I'd expect this Clone Wars Legacy show to more follow the Bad Batch, releasing more episodes per year. The Bad Batch Season 2 and 3, alongside Tales of the Jedi slash Empire, also seem to be part of a 40 episode production order, with their episode count roughly equaling the same amount as 40 22 minute episodes of animation, though due to the nature of streaming, the episode runtimes are spread less evenly, with the Tales episodes being shorter and thus being able to get 6 episodes out of what would be the same amount of screen time as 4 Clone Wars episodes slash 1 unfinished story arc. The final episode of The Bad Batch also amounts to the runtime of two standard length episodes, which wouldn't surprise me if it's actually two episodes stitched together production-wise, just like how the first episode of The Bad Batch was actually three episodes stitched together, under the production codes 101, 101A, and 101B, as seen on their asset design sheets. The Clone Wars just so happening to have exactly 40 unfinished episodes left that could span two animated seasons would fit this model perfectly, being able to get the entirety of the unfinished story arts commissioned under a single animation order. I have two order examples they could potentially release these in. The first would be for them to complete the more majorly requested arcs in the first season to gain more hype from its audience for marketing. This would potentially mean the arcs are edited to be more standalone, e.g. not including Quinlan Voss instead of Daphomir and not including Ahsoka in Saving Voss. This first season will consist of Crystal Crisis on Utapau, The Bounty Hunter arc, Dark Disciple, Son of Daphomir and Saving Voss. This first season would also be one that would mostly consist of updating existing assets they made for the original planned episodes before they got cancelled, with all but Saving Voss already having at least some of their models already created. The second season of this order would contain the other 20 episodes, with these being the 5 arcs that are requested less often, and would release after the show has had its fanbase built up with its first season. This would thus consist of the Sistrine arc, Rex and Artu, Yoda and the Bad Batch on Kashyyyk, Return to Mon Cala, and the X-Files abduction arc. 
Ending with the X-Files abduction story arc would essentially end this legacy show with an element of mystery, with it even having the potential to hint at future stories in a new era that could be told someday. This season, consisting of only one story arc that got models and designs created for it, would mostly consist of new and repurposed models, with it making more sense that these story arcs would come later than those that had more significant work completed on them in the original production. Having the unfinished arc that includes the Bad Batch in the second season would also allow them some time to rest after their own show has ended. The second order example I have for this show would get to keep crossover elements from specific arcs, being the same order I used for the 20 episodes season 8 and 9 earlier. This keeps the release order to an almost original production order, besides switching it so Crystal Crisis comes before the Bounty Hunter arc, saving Voss being moved after Rex and R2, and the X-Files abduction arc coming last. I believe these three arcs thematically fit better as the start, middle and end of their respective seasons. This enables saving Voss to mirror Dark Disciple as the middle arc of its season. This would make the first season of this proposed legacy show consist of Crystal Crisis on Utapau, the Bounty Hunter arc, Dark Disciple, Yoda and the Bad Batch on Kashyyyk, and Son of Daphomir. While the second season will consist of the following arcs, the Sith Shrine arc, Rex and Artu, Saving Voss, Return to Moncala, and the X-Files abduction arc. If they produced the story arcs this way, they could potentially decide to release four episodes at once every four weeks, so we could watch an entire arc at once. This way keeping the original episode formats while also allowing people to watch them in a movie like long format without removing scenes they would in a single file release. For example, if they started to release these from May 4th, 2025, then Crystal Crisis would get all four of its episodes dropped on that date, and the next story, The Bounty Hunter arc, would get all four of its episodes dropped on May 28th, and then so on, having a new story drop every four weeks consisting of four new episodes until August 20th, when the first season would end with the Son of Daphomir story arc. The second season would repeat the same process, but potentially start at a different time of the year, such as starting in September 2026, for the the remaining other five story arcs. A lot of people suggest they could complete these arcs as part of the Tales of Anthology shorts. I personally don't see that happening unless they decide to change that show's format with them otherwise having to cut a lot of the unfinished story arcs content, something I don't think they do based on how Ahsoka's walkabout was kept to its full original length in the final season, despite its third episode technically not doing much for the overall narrative. It's possible if they get a higher than 40 episode order that they decide to use the Tales anthologies to keep telling new stories while they spend a few years finishing the unfinished Clone Wars arcs. Around the time the fifth episode of the Ahsoka show was airing, a few people thought they could complete the 40 unfinished episodes of the Clone Wars in live action. In my opinion, this is not feasible in the slightest, as when you think about how grand of a scale these stories were planned to be, alongside the limited budget the Disney Plus live action shows get compared to the live action movies, there does not seem to be a way to portray the scale of the Clone Wars the same way they did in animation. Animation as a whole is able to do a lot more with a budget that's a lot less compared to the live action shows. This is before you bring into question the situation with the actors. While they probably could get Hayden and Ewan back to play Anakin and Obi-Wan, they'd have to de-age them for the entire 40 episode run. Then you have the aspect of the clones where they'd not only have to digitally copy Tamara Morrison a million times, but also de-age all of those individual ones that remove their helmets. You then bring into question who would play Count Dooku, considering the passing of Christopher Lee back in 2015. Another point I bring up is what about fully CGI characters like General Grievous? Can they afford to accurately portray him with a Disney Plus live action TV show budget? And while it would be nice to see Ariana Greenblatt as a young Ahsoka again, Ahsoka herself would at most be featured in just 8 episodes of the 40 episode run. And then they'd also have to recast a bunch of existing animated characters, like who would play Ventress, who would play Quinlan Voss, who would play Mother Towson. This could then run the risk of losing the original characterization, as in my opinion, voice actors like Nika Futterman, with her performance as Ventress, is a big part of what makes the character. 
if for some reason they are not able to animate these story arcs, then I think they should at the very least adapt them into some form of print media, e.g. novels or comics. Though considering the Bound Hunt arc itself is in a similar situation to the Crystal Crisis arc, they could release its four unfinished reels and say that it is canon adjacent, considering it has some discrepancies with newer projects, like the Crystal Crisis arc itself currently has. For Yoda and the Bad Batch on Kashyyyk, they could adapt it into a four-issue comic series due to that story arc getting designs created for it pre-cancellation. As for the Rex and R2 and Padme arcs, they could be adapted into novels due to them only having draft scripts and focusing on specific characters. As we know, Dark Disciple, Son of Daphne and Saving Voss have already been released in print media. Sadly, I don't think that they'd release the Sith Shrine or the Exiles Abduction arc in print form due to how selective Ahsoka's inclusion in things is, as well as the specific tweaks and changes they'd need to make to fit continuity. While this method would finally get the story arcs released in some form, as we've seen with specific elements of Dark Disciple, Son of Daphomir and Saving Voss, only the core story is accounted as having happened in regard to on-screen events basically still counting the stories as unfinished in relation to new on-screen stories. I believe the best way to complete the Clone Wars would be the 40-episode legacy show option, with them producing them in an almost original production order. This would keep the stories to their original intended format, while also making sure all episodes are accounted for, as well as not ruining the ending that the Siege of Mandalore made for the main show. Further to this, it would also allow us to have both the big ending stay intact as the ending it was meant to be, while also allowing people to then go back and experience those other planned Clone Wars stories after the fact. The Clone Wars chronological order list on StarWars.com could also be altered to include the episodes of the spin-off show, allowing new viewers to watch these story arcs in timeline order in between the ones from the main show. In the same vein as the shorter Tales anthology shows, a separate show would only add more context to the main Clone Wars show, enriching details that were otherwise left to unanswered questions. Though if they do decide to just complete the arcs as further seasons or animated specials, I will in no way be against that decision, because these stories deserve to be told on screen. I will always hope these story arcs get completed in animation someday. I feel like their legacy is too important to be ignored. They are integral parts of the overall Star Wars canon that need to be told that do nothing but add to all the new projects they are currently making. Thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed, please like, subscribe and comment. Until the next time, goodbye.